What's up everyone? My name is Tawa Palaze and you are watching the Analog Culture. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, DJ Nusi here. Welcome to Analog Culture. We're out in Fire and Ice, uh, Cape Town. I'm sitting here with uh, Ubud Tabo Palazzi. <laughs> um, like, I, n I know Ubud Tabo from a heck of a lot of events that literally have to do with alternative music, if I may say that. Yeah, yeah. Alternative music and... and you, 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 you guys actually got me to love that genre because I literally am a house head. And the then flip side. The flip side. Yeah. Of it, the flip side of it. Uh, Ubud Tavo comes from Pretoria. Yes. Uh, tell me about Pretoria. <laughs> like uh, in the in the in the space of of the type of music you you, you play. Look, uh, in that type of music I play, I don't think uh, we. Pretoria was known for that yeah. um, back in the days, but it slowly, you know, kind of developed into, you know, the hub, the hub of, 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 of good music. Yeah. Um, like they say, Kopidori, Diabo. Diabo. You know, so yeah, it's literally yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, so you literally started from... Let's talk about the growing up part of it before. If we're going to talk Pretoria de Aboa, yeah. you growing up in Pretoria and being born and bred in Pretoria, where does the influence of the choice of music come from? Yeah, man, it, it started from from my parents, yeah. actually. Uh, I think they, they planted that seed, you know. Uh, I grew up listening to music yeah. day in, day out. Either when my dad was dropping me off at school or we'd be on the road. Yeah. There would just be music playing or we'd be at home. He would wake me up uh, with music. Yeah. Um, especially Vano. So there'll be, you know, those weekends where he just wakes up and then he just came back from buying a few records and then he'll come and pump them. Yeah. And his friends will come over. Or it would be like a Sunday morning, mom is cooking, She's playing music as well. Um, yeah, and, and, and that's where everything kind of started yeah. with me. And then, obviously, you know, uh, done with school, tertiary, then started buying records. I actually started playing house yeah. on records, by the way. Yeah, yeah. But I got bored, man. I was like, let's test the, the other side of the record. And I'm like, oh, okay, quite interesting. But... The influence came from, you know, the 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 jazz, the 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 soul that my mom was playing, the jazz that my dad was playing, the fusion that my dad was playing, the reggae that my dad was playing. So, yeah. it that's where it, it 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 all started. Yeah. Do you still have those vinyls that uh, the dopey was collecting? Yeah. So 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 they are actually at home, um, uh, packed nicely. I don't even want to touch them. I think I. I <laughs> I hold them very dear, yeah, you know, so yeah, I'm yeah. like, these are, I mean, those are first presses. Some of them, they still have two rand sticker nice. on them, you know, wow. so you don't even want to yeah, scratch them yeah. a little bit. Keep them there. That's where they belong. That's so dope, man. Yeah. So literally when you came into the game, it was uh, you going in and playing the similar type of sound. Or did you go in and say you're gonna stick to house before actually checking the flip side? No, so so I got taught by there's a friend of mine called Tumi. His DJ name is Flat Shoes, but he's he stopped DJing. Flat Shoes. Yeah, Flat Shoes. Such a dope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so I was at a party. He was playing on vinyl, and I'm like, Joe, I need you to teach me. Yeah. And he says no, come over. And then I went to his house uh, the very Monday. The party was on a Saturday. Sorry. The Monday I was at his house. Yeah. And all he did was just give me the basics. You know, here's the headsets, here's a mixer. This is what you do with the mixer. There's a turntable, there's your channels, there's another turntable. And then and then he was like, um, this is how you cue, whatever. Yeah. It took, and I played two songs the whole day. 
like the entire day that's yeah. all i did just trying to you know uh beat match or you know find the find the rhythm find the beat and all that so, yeah. so i i it took me the whole day and um and that's 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 how i got into djing and started buying house records yeah um, house africa was my go-to uh in the beginning um but i was like let me test the other side man yeah what's there you know yeah because you know with a vinyl or with an ep you'll find an instrumental a vocal uh a dub and a alternative mix yeah you know so yeah. then i started you know tapping into that into that the alternative uh, side yeah right. yeah so you would make those trips from Pretoria to Joburg for the record. Yeah, I, you remember back in the days they actually used to send us SMSs. Yeah, yeah. To say they a French shipment or a US shipment has arrived at House Africa. I think they usually came in on a Wednesday or something like that. Yeah. Um Yeah, the following day I'm there. You know, what my parents don't know is I actually used to buy textbooks, make copies of my textbooks. <laughs> <laughs> and sell and resell the textbook so I can make more money for Vana. <laughs> <laughs> Proper copyright. Yeah, that's exactly. Like I would I would I would literally go into into our library, yeah, make copies of the relevant chapters of that particular subject. Yeah. I would actually take it upon myself to ask the, 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 the lecturer and say, So which chapters are we focusing on? Yeah. I just want to prep myself and they'll give me chapter one, two, five, and six. I'm like, okay. Ding. Then I, I make copies of that and I resell that. Then I make money out of it and I'll go buy records. <laughs> so that's how I, 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 my parents don't know this, but obviously <laughs> after viewing this, they'll know. Yeah. yeah I, so. That's so dope though. That's yeah, so dope. So at that stage, <clears throat> already, you know, everybody in the, in the game, we're talking, you already know Vinny in there. You already know Christos. You already know the, the, the big guns that were literally at House Africa. <laughs> Yeah, so not 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 so much, but um, I mean, Vinny is a Vinny's not my friend. He's he's my friends, my my brother's friend. Yeah. So he comes from that um, uh, age. So he's a so my 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 cousins are his friends. Yeah. yeah. But that's how I knew him. I knew him more. Uh, that's how I started to know Vinny. Oh, uh, okay. Not as a DJ, but as a Oh, that's my brother's friend. Yeah, yeah. That's how I knew him. But then, um, in fact, the, the one person that I knew first was Kanunu. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I knew Kanunu through House Africa. Yeah. And uh, then I started hanging with him. And then he sort of obviously introduced me to these guys, the Christos, uh, Vini. But I, obviously, like I say, I knew Vini. But yeah. um, Vini was, oh, so you play? You know? Yeah, you know, and then, and then that's how we, you know, we, we connected. We connected, yeah. Right. You're here selling uh, copyrighted textbooks, <laughs> collecting uh, vinyls. Yeah. What's your first gig that you remember, and how was it? Yo. My first gig. You mean paying or, or just? Let's, let's uh, take the one that gave an impact. That said, now this is what I do. Sure. I think it was in Attridgeville. Um, there used to be a place. Uh, I forgot the name now. It was owned by. Uh, I don't know if you know Mashoban. Yeah. 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 So. Um, Is it, it was Connor Couch? No, Connor no, no, Couch. Connor yeah, Couch. I forgot the name couch. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was my first gig, actually, where I got paid. Yeah. Uh, so. Um Kanuno had organized and said, No, come let's go let's go play. I've got a gig there and I'm like, Ajo, ah, can I play maybe just before you? Yeah. And yeah, then I got there and I played like you know with, with, with records. <laughs> you play what you what you brought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. a it's not about uh, uh, uh you having a memory stick and then you can you go can across. Swing, yeah. But I played house, you know, and um I was not the best mixer at the time. I was just fooling around yeah but I got paid for it I think that was the gig that actually uh, got me into 
you know getting used to having a gig or getting used to you know uh playing for an audience yeah yeah, yeah. What well, what is your take on obviously you come from the school of vinyl yeah and you're switching over to the school of usbs now yeah for you that 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 that, that change, transition the yeah. change it took a while yeah i must be honest it it took a while um and so my brother my brother is clifford yeah so clifford um so he had 10 tables he had i remember at the time he had cdj 200 yeah and he when he gets bookings so he would he would get gigs for us and then i would go and play but now he, i think he got tired of carrying 10 tables yeah and he's like hey Joe, you really need to convert now into into usb into usb yeah actually at the time it was cds before before the usbs yeah i'm like okay i'll do it and i started now uh you know um i got myself a laptop then i started burning uh cds i started buying cds um i actually bought a lot on on amazon so especially now that was now the where the alternative really kicked in yeah uh for me because i would buy you know uh, cds and then put them in a in a slapper bag yeah yeah slap they made money off of people yeah. <laughs> that bag. i think i had about <laughs> i probably have about four slappers sure yeah four full yeah full pity they're not vinyl right <laughs> <laughs> yeah pity they're not vinyl but uh so what i tried to do is um you know when you collect vinyl there's there's many ways to connect vinyl there's yeah yeah you 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 collect because uh you collect for listening at home for your listening pleasure yeah you collect for a crowd you collect for you know i'll i'll, I'll see a vinyl and i'll say you know what dosi will like this one and I'll buy it, but I'll buy it for you. Yeah. So there's many ways in, in collecting in collecting, yeah. in collecting in collecting records. So the other thing for me is I try to revisit what I have on on CDs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And try to now convert into vinyl. Oh. So I'll go through and like, okay, oh, I need this on vinyl. Then I start searching for it, and then once I get it, some of them are very hard to find. But yeah, very um, very hard. Then once I get it, and then I uh, buy it and they they don't come cheap <laughs> they don't come cheap but i was somewhere i read you used to play trumpet hmm? in church i tried you tried. Uh, so i uh, look i was raised in church yeah um actually my house is next door to a church uh, so i tried you know during uh you go sunday school then Sunday, while you're doing Sunday school, the the band is 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 uh, there rehearsing, and um, then I tried to do the the trumpet thing. Yeah, I liked it, but it was not. It's like oh, this this requires a lot of energy, not for me. Not for you. Yeah, but <laughs> I could you know, I could swing it. Yeah, uh, properly. I could play it, even though it made you like super hungry yeah <laughs> when i when i when i read that i actually linked it to your choice of music yeah and 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 the jazz that you you generally play and i was like it makes a lot of sense yeah that that U- U- Prata would come out like this because of of that notion yeah the trumpet. yeah we're collecting vinyl we're playing we're moving into an era whereby alternative becomes light when do you meet trev when do you meet kaya and when do you form avant-garde Oh, so uh, Avantgarde was formed before my time. Okay, and uh, I met Trevor through through Vinny. Okay, because uh, he used to hang along around with Vinny a lot. Yeah, um, I think at some point he was he was named Vinny's driver or something <laughs> like that. So, but with Kaya, I met Kaya before I met Trevor. Okay, but I met him. Back in the days where there used to be a place I used to play at in in Orchards called, um, I think it was Afro Lounge or something. Okay. And so I met Kaya there. Um, Kaya's been a mean collector for for a long time. Yeah. Then uh, dots connected when I met 
Trevor and then obviously Trevor was more on the alternative side yeah and then they formed avant-garde vintage lounge at the time okay and I used to attend the events in Soweto uh, I think I was booked by them I think twice or so yeah um, yeah then we started you know uh, um, connecting like that and then one of the members left uh, skin deep uh, I think they needed now someone else yeah, yeah. and um, uh, I know I remember before I, I went to Miami uh, Kaya came through and said Ejo, we want you to join um, avant-garde we've been following what you're doing and there's a lot of uh, uh, authenticity in what you 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 present yeah um, how would you like to join avant-garde I'm like, no of course man I mean I love the movement I love the culture and uh, and that's how it all started yeah. but then obviously when I met Trevor and then you know it we developed into like a good friendship and um, and that's how it all you know kicked off yeah yeah well w- w- I think the first event that we knocked heads at was actually n- the first event I attended that mm. was hosted by Avantgarde was the Sankoff in Carfax. Was it Carfax or King Kong? Was it King Kong? Oh, no, no, no. Carfax. Yes, Carfax. You're right. Yeah. Carfax. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, uh, like the. I brought a couple of my friends with people that literally don't listen to alternative music. Yeah, yeah. I've never been engaged with. It was it was a different experience. Mm. And then I got to find out about your celebration as well. Oh yes. Were you part of that uh, uh, movement as well? Yeah. So 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 remember, celebration is the child of avant-garde. Yeah. So avant-garde was. Um, we did two major events in the year, so we did connect uh, connect connecting the dots. Okay. So connecting the dots was more of a. Uh, you know, we would bring an international act, um, the likes of Spinner, uh, Kaidi, uh, Digo. So we, because if you if you if you can recall, we used to travel a lot. Yeah. So every year we'd go to either Brazil or or Europe or whatever, and then we'd connect with DJs in that in that part of the world, and then make it our you know mission to bring them over for connecting the dots yeah so connecting the dots was more of an international where we brought an international act and then we surround them with you know our us and um a few of the cats that are into alternative into the alternative sound and then celebration was more of having a band yeah you know um uh a performing band and then with obviously if whether it's a four piece or whatever and uh and then it will have djs as well so it was two major events that we did but yeah. in between we would have one or two there and some of them would would obviously do them in the motion or in the notion of raising funds to to travel yeah. you know so yeah. so those were the those were the those was that was the plan yeah, yeah. Uh, for 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 the year connecting the dots yeah name drop for me please you what? just dropped spinner yeah name drop for me artists that you've engaged with on connecting the dots sure uh kaidi kaidi from 2000 black yeah um digo uh in fact we met um now the name runs away we actually met him in bell in 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 netherlands yeah in the netherlands uh and we brought him over <sighs> why does the name run away anyway we'll we'll yeah. come back to that um so we met we met him in 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 in, in netherlands and then we said you know what the following year we want to bring you over yeah and yeah he 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 came over i don't know why i forgot the name I must stop drinking tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Please remind me to ask you, how did that come about? What? Because the tequila. Tequila. Thing. I don't know, man. Like uh, it's literally become the friend. Yeah, no, it's the, it's the, 
it's the chosen one yeah yeah, yeah. um i mean amongst my friends we we <laughs> we take a lot of tequila yeah 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 but i mean tequila makes you happy man <laughs> and you you know you 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 become one with the people true yeah true yeah how many countries have you been to not enough not enough yeah uh but look i i, I did a i did myself some good travels yeah especially with the guys with yeah. with kaya and and uh and and trev so i mean we did we did japan brazil uh germany belgium uh netherlands um New York, Chicago. Yeah, we yeah. we did a we did a few travels. Each and every country you go to, do you specifically go for music culture there or literally it's just you traveling? Like would you leave South so, Africa saying there's a fest somewhere and you're going to experience it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. but the, the 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 primary thing is uh we look for for record shops. <laughs> 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 so so we like okay if we plan to go somewhere then we say okay fine let's hook up with you know the guys in in that side for example um spinner yeah we'd say uh spinner vic lavender i mean vic actually was you know one of the guys that said oh i see you coming to new york uh let's do a gig in chicago i'll hook you up with the guys in chicago nice like oh okay and then we got we landed in new york and then we took a flight to chicago which was about i think two hours or so um and we got there had our gig uh hosted us quite good and then went back to new york um and hooked up with spinner that side um yeah and that, that, that that's it but when we travel predominantly becomes okay we are here uh, let's look for for a record store, for record source. Yeah, my, my heart is like pounding very heavy right now thinking where was i so as i could document that sorry where was i so as i could document oh that? because I've, I've, I've one of the things i've felt is there's a lot of experience and knowledge in people that travel and when they come back because they've they've seen things in a different perspective yeah as to how other people mm. live the stories i'm sure that you've experienced overseas food the music yeah. the events the reception of the people you and can never explain enough for me to get the feeling yeah i mean yeah. i mean you know uh there's one one part of of brazil that i picked up which was very interesting for me so we were in copacabana okay uh so we're like ah, let's go look for food you know then we were on the beach front so there's a whole lot of you know um spots there yeah and bands performing and stuff so we get there we sit down we have a drink we have our meal and when the bill comes uh it has so you know you've got whatever you've been having the food and the drinks at the bottom is got it has entertainment so basically you sit down you eat but you you pay for being entertained by the band that's performing there wow so which is something like sort of like a hundred bucks or whatever the case could be yeah. and i found it interesting because now it's 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 more to say um you you as a venue you'd uh, book a band but for the for the band to obviously get paid right yeah, yeah. they'll get paid because there'll be people sitting there yeah. it actually encourages the band to also say to their friends come over come each year you know yeah. then the more the people the more money they get yeah so it says whatever that was paid for by the people as entertainment it goes towards the the band so which was quite interesting i mean we don't have that in our in our culture or in our country yeah. you know yeah. and even at some of the clubs um they'll give you like a card so when you enter they give you a card uh they punch your details or whatever so you have that 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 becomes your tab to the bar wow 
right yeah then you use that to order drinks and it it, it also it also you know tests the 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 trust that uh the club has to their people yeah. you know yeah. to say i trust that you'll hand over the card uh at the end of when you're ready to go then you give you give the card to the the card to the barman it has your your entire bill basically. your 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 entire bill yeah. including the entrance the at the gate nice and then you pay for that you hand over and then you pay and i wish we could do it in this country but hey. <laughs> hey. but yeah uh, it's, you, it's 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 you just reminded me of of this 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 place it's in the favelas right by um uh uh, uh Copa what's the, that same beach yeah where they literally apparently it was a gathering of slaves back in the olden days oh yeah yeah sort of like <coughs> a a a jeez i don't know how to explain that space mm. but literally when everybody comes off work they go to that space and they sit there and in the middle of this of that whole thing yeah there's a band playing congas there ah. the whole entire night yeah like i had never seen that before and it was brazil is very musical yeah um it's so musical it's not funny like I know they <clears throat> it's one country that loves football. They they into their football big time. But yeah. also music. I mean there's everywhere music is playing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um we inherited a lot of their sound. I mean, I play a lot of bossa. Yeah. And obviously it, or, it originates from that uh that part of the world, you know. So it's it's such a I mean, I actually went into a, we went into a favela. We walked a favela yeah quite interesting and quite dangerous as well but it was it was worth it when yeah. you're walking there do you think it's the same as how they describe it is it as bad as how they describe no, it? It, it, it it's quite it, it's they live like us by the way they they i mean the food we eat they eat yeah uh, your giblets and stuff they eat that yeah chicken feet they eat that you know but uh <clears throat> obviously it's it's sort of a a mafia ran type of yeah. environment yeah. you know i mean i remember there was a time when we did the the walk in the favela uh so we'd be taking pictures you know as we walked up yeah. and then there was a point where our tour guide said to us this is like a <clears throat> a, a, a drug dealer uh part of the favela yeah so no pictures nothing um and as we walked i mean they were like 13 year old with a gun on the table they're playing music there they have a you know one of the bluetooth speakers yeah but they chill there but they have a gun on the table that for me was jaw dropping yeah it's like oh for me that's dangerous we don't see it in our country yeah, you know yeah. uh, i know we there's guns over everywhere but uh, they're not exposed to that you know in in that nature but uh it's such a they i got so scared like i i literally froze can you imagine i'm like oh and then we walked up and then as we were walking I was just telling us you know the history the culture of 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 the favela yeah and um uh how they do you know the drug trafficking and etc etc and obviously we we are the same in so they look at you and like okay here's a black guy but we don't know you yeah you know yeah. now they start they now they now focus so should anything happen they they're, they're ready. ready for you yeah. you know so it was quite just quite a interesting uh Sheesh. scene it would be it would yeah be. have you been to nigeria uh not yet not yet we we actually tried to go so what we as avant-garde so we wanted to to do nigeria um part of it was you know just to 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 see where uh the legendary fella grew up and see you know yeah. see where he was hanging you know where he grew up and all that uh, but we couldn't because at the time it was quite pricey the 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 visa was ridiculously expensive yeah the accommodation was ridiculously ridiculous like ridiculous it was bad you know, it was bad yeah. and then we couldn't it was easier for us to 
okay ach, let's go to europe yeah it was slightly cheaper for us to do europe as opposed to the own to, yeah, yeah but i'll some something that i would like to do is visit nigeria yeah, yeah. That, that question is leading me to asking you i presume because you did celebration yes here, you would actually go to the one that yeah. hosts that side as uh-huh. well well uh, look um if you if you if you if you uh, uh, if you are aware we change from celebration to sankofa yeah right yeah and one of the biggest reasons was uh we actually got a mail from from nigeria to say uh celebration is is like a a copyright oh, okay so we can't well, for us to use the theme celebration or the name celebration we need to pay for it basically. pay for it yeah. you know and we're like you know what let's maybe it's time we we we, we change uh, and that's why we we moved from celebration to sankofa but we would have loved to host it you know yeah i mean in new york we uh reach rich medina okay rich medina did an event called celebration and we attended it ah yes yeah, nice, nice, which nice. was quite dope yeah. and he had um uh i think it's Sion kuti okay yeah performing uh, i think his son son yes yeah, yes yeah, yeah. yes so he had him performing there which was quite dope yeah, yeah. very dope his music but we would have loved to you know host a celebration in nigeria yeah yeah, yeah. see your influence i actually bought uh cn kuti's um album, album. of band camp yeah because of of i had just came back from sanko yeah Funny oh enough. okay oh yeah just came back from that's so what so am i friends, i know actually? fella fella was introduced to me by my dad so my dad bought an it was a cd yeah uh, i don't know if you know the uh, um teacher don't teach me nonsense two tracks <laughs> just two tracks <laughs> 25 minutes or 27 minutes yeah. and another one was 35 or look and laugh or something like that um so my dad introduced me to fella and yeah. that's how i started now you know following the following music. the music yeah yeah uh, uh, there's a guy i want to do to from so it yeah um he's a he's a friend of mine to me uh older brother uh to me yes left here went home for the holidays I get that side the Friday to me says don't go home let yeah. me pick you up and let's have fun. Yeah. They woke me up in the morning. Duku duku. Yeah. Duku duku. Like I'm literally out of it yeah. and I hear the song playing. I woke up dancing. <laughs> yeah, of course. I woke up dancing and then Toto was like, "Do you know this?" And I was like, "No, just the beat is Yeah. It's on another level." Yeah, he's the he's the king of Afro, man. Yeah. The Afro pop. Sheesh. Yeah. Are we still going to see Sankofa? Uh yes. When we so I mean if you remember we we actually lost a dear friend part of Avangard um Umbumi. Okay. Uh, he was he was basically he was behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, he's a DJ but he never used to play. He was more he did a lot of uh our admin. Yeah. So he passed away in 2022. Um Sorry about that and uh yeah i think after that we you know sort of lost a little bit of energy yeah but we we in the plans and obviously now kai is 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 now based in uh, south carolina yeah so uh once he returns and then we'll we're still talking about it but we we want to you know um plan it properly so that when when we come back it, it becomes like a you know like a solid thing yeah yeah, yeah. trev tober trev tober <laughs> yeah are you part of the organizers of of the birthday party or does he literally do it no no, no that's actually trevor's baby yeah he's born in october yeah um hence trev tober um but i mean we we just support in terms of any anything that he needs from our side you know yeah. um we'll just reach out but that's totally his baby I've, why i'm asking about that is literally whatever the left hand trevor has on something yeah your right hand is there yeah every everything <laughs> everything yeah no we 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 i think i asked you this come before along while we were attending an event you play a lot on kfm like yes. uh, yeah you spend a lot of jazz yeah. on the alternative music 
Have you ever considered being on radio? Yeah. Like literally being a host of a show and look, I would love to. Yeah. Um it's just that I haven't given it, you know, a lot of energy in terms of, you know, going for it. Uh I'm still in the corporate space. Yeah. Um I'll probably should I consider doing radio? I'll probably, you know, do like you're doing a, a, a podcast or you know yeah um, where i get to uh, engage with a lot of you know uh, musical people and all that but uh it's been in my head you know to do radio yeah, uh, yeah. i mean we did jazzery with kai fm uh, back in the days um which was quite fun yeah because you know the the, the it, it's it's how you prepare for a show that that's uh um that's the key thing you know yeah. preparing going through the music and what you'll be chatting about uh which guests you're going to have over you know so it's 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 such a it's a nice thing to do but it requires a lot of time yeah i can yeah. imagine yeah it requires a lot of time i get starstruck every time I can tell you right now i'm star i'm starstruck as i'm sitting here. why <laughs> I, I, i don't know how how when you meet your favorite artist in essence mm. how does that make you feel actually i i sit in my corner you sit in your yeah corner. i i'm like oh damn is that is that him yeah oh, okay but i wouldn't i don't i don't like to you know to ambush them yeah, for yeah, like yeah. of a better phrase to go and say can i take a picture no i i I'll, yeah I'll just I'll just stay there and and admire yeah. who I see I'm like oh is that I mean um a lot of people know that Stevie Wonder is my favorite yeah. artist uh I haven't met him but Spinner cuz Spinner obviously do does a lot of work with him yeah me sitting with Spinner talking about Stevie it was as if he was there you know uh I remember when he when he performed in 90 was it 98 I think um at Joburg Stadium yeah when there there was I think a whole lot of artists uh, Kenny Latimo uh Salif Keita Stevie Wonder was there my we we organized a uh, like a a, a mini bus yeah. with a couple of friends back in the days um Stevie performed at around Two o'clock in the morning or something like that. I said to my guys, it's because they were ready to leave. I think they went there for like uh, you know, Kenny Latimo and the rest. Yeah. And I said to them, I know it's cool. Uh, you can leave. You guys can go. Sheesh. And then I waited for Stevie's performance. Yeah. After that, I left. I was like, I'll find myself. I'll sort myself out. And I just walked out in early hours of the morning and waited for the first taxi out of Joburg to Pretoria. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh why I was saying I I I get starstruck is I want to be able to tell stories and have pictures of them. Yeah. Oh gee. I cornered the brat tower on yeah. stage. Yeah. He has a picture. He has, he has a picture. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, know yeah. this man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you being at Kaya before we get to all the people that that we don't get to see generally yeah you got ukrek maloka in the building oh yeah like the, the musical maestro he's been one of the greatest minds in radio yeah in, in my life yeah sure like sure. He, you can you can feel his touch on a lot of radio stations mm. like so having to engage with a man like that yes he's a i say he's a bright spark man he is. yeah he's a he's a i mean i remember when we when we hosted um spinner yeah so we approached kaya uh, if you remember kaya did did uh, um it actually advertised the show yeah uh on their station so we 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 approached him and then he was like yeah sure let's do it um so he became they became our you know our marketing partner yeah for for that event in particular 
and he was like no you guys are hosting one of our friends they're friends with spinner obviously yeah and uh sorry then um he was like no you're hosting our friend so let's 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 collaborate on this one yeah and we did and um after that uh he called he called us and said um Oskido would like to host you guys so we actually went to Oskido's house with Spinner Greg cooked for us it was such a <laughs> the guy can cook man yeah. like he he just went in the uh prepare a stop and we were just you know chilling and then uh just it, for us it for them was to say uh you guys are hosting one of our friends who we've had here in a very long time and um uh you know it was like thank you for bringing him back yeah, you know yeah uh, let's 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 uh let's share some bread and and that was it i mean who gets like, who gets invited to to a skido's house not know? me exactly <laughs> and i was like mm, okay this is you know so i was i was pretty humbled before I ask you about what it takes to host such an event. Yeah. I want to start at what's the conversation on the table there? What's the conversation there? <laughs> so we Yo. So with Avant-Garde <laughs> we argue a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like we 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 all we all come from different angles and we we don't necessarily agree on a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, I would want this this way. Kaya would want it differently. Trev would want it differently. And then everything becomes a okay, uh, let, uh, let's vote. Yeah. Obviously it will be an odd number. Yeah. But uh, yeah, oh, yeah. if it's if it's if two goes in the same direction then the other one has no choice but to, you know, follow suit. To follow suit. So yeah. we it, it like it 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 requires a lot of conversations, a lot of arguments, a lot of up and down. I mean you know just to approve a flyer it will have <laughs> multi conversations <laughs> like up and down and then to a point where i'm like yeah but guys why are we yeah why is such a what's, fuss what's the fuss yeah and kaya will explain what the fuss is you know and that's how that's how detailed he is yeah but yeah. It, to answer your question it takes a lot like we it it takes a lot you know would even argue about who we bringing yeah and then they'll say uh, uh we bring we'll bring such a person i said but why you know yeah, uh, yeah. give me reasons and then <laughs> the reasons will start popping we always like we always at our we test each other yeah and it and and that uh you know equates to to how the event will plan out yeah yeah it equates to great events. yeah exactly yeah. so like like there's a lot of up and down like there's a lot of work there's a lot of uh things that we need to put in place yeah yeah and it's not about you know having the mass um, like you know having a huge event it's saying let's bring together you know people yeah. that are like minded that are uh you know that have an open ear um in one room yeah and that's it i mean if you you've been to one of our events it's not about uh who plays when and how yeah no people just you know come and do your thing yeah and and we'll listen i was i was talking to like i said i brought friends that have never done an alternative yeah. events that have never done this right oh mike bought the painting oh Was from it? um uh what's the guy the tall guy yeah yeah there's a painting we all signed yeah everyone i think he event. did i think he did three Three yeah, paintings. He did three. Yeah, he did. There was paintings. the big one that everybody signed. Was yeah, there. he called. He went piece by piece to everyone. Yeah, uh, could you go sign the sign book? the? Like that for me is something culturally significant, and you can never explain it to anybody. Yeah, how true. significant it is true. to uh, a culture. And you see it from the beginning when you start entering. He's busy he's doing busy that. Yeah. And 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 how he does it, he he actually. Like he just goes around and sees, okay. Let let me let me let me put it in you know yeah in a picture, and he does that. 
me and Mike were sitting now after the, that, that event. Yeah. With the picture hanging. Or he hadn't hung it yet. It was sitting on the floor. And we're looking at it now. And I'm like, at some stage or some day when you sell this painting somewhere, I'll be one of those people that can walk in and say, here the artist was feeling the music. Yeah. He was yes. feeling the people. Yes. It, I can explain that painting. Yeah. I can literally explain it. And and that event now was an eye opener for me. Yeah. In a sense that when you talk about the detailed planning that went into it, mm. it makes me wonder: Do you guys ever look at the returns of those kind of events, or is it let's pump money and have the event? So to also answer your question in terms of do we. So we, we don't make money out of Those avant-garde, to be honest with you. In in, in in many cases, we are at a loss, yeah. you know. But it's more it's more like, you know, just to keep the culture alive. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and find our space to where we enjoy ourselves with people that are uh, like-minded, yeah, you know. Yeah. So... We literally don't. The money we make, it goes towards the the entire production. Yeah. You know, paying the DJs, the venue, um, artists, whatever. But we literally don't. I don't remember where uh, I was. I had money in my account where it came from. The being <laughs> from the event. <laughs> now. Nah. But we still did it, I yeah, mean, yeah, you know, yeah. for however long. I'm definitely sure yeah. the patrons for, for that really appreciate the work. You yeah. Because I definitely know I do. Yeah. Uh, somewhere, somehow, it will yield its fruits. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, you know, the, the obviously the fruit is sometimes you, you, you it would be where how you connect with, um, with artists and, you know, how it connects you to the world. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. avant-garde connect, avant-garde connected us to, you know, a lot of um, uh, musical greats. True. You know, so because you got to host them and and you you know you create a, a relationship with them. Yeah. And yeah. So I think that's that's the the uh, that's uh, the the reward we the get. Reward. Yeah, yeah. That's the profit. Yeah. It. That's the profit. Yeah. Um, what what. So we should be expecting another avant-garde uh, event soon. Yeah, soon. Soon. Um, Any particular plans on artists and who might they be? Mm, not yet. Uh, I mean, we still have our our wish list is so long. Uh, we haven't even you know covered half of it. Yeah. So, but um, we still we're still deciding. We'll see. I mean, a lot of things will depend. Or oh, that will depend on a lot of things, rather. Yeah. You know, to say, uh, uh, do we have the funds to do it? How do we do it? Uh, how accessible will everything be? You know, so, so yeah. Um, a, a lot will determine when. This will determine when we'll have the event. Yeah. 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 Pratawa, I still feel like uh, this is short-lived. <laughs> I still want to have this conversation with you, but I know today you're supposed to be performing yeah, yeah. At, at that event. We've got the event, yeah. yeah. W- one last one for for people out there that literally want to be doing what you're doing, that want to have that kind of, of connection with, yeah. with the music. Well, well, what would you suggest to them? Sure. <laughs> um... Look, man. I like I like this word to say each to their own. Yeah. I think uh, um, do what makes you happy. Yeah. Uh, if it makes you happy, don't don't stop doing it. Why? You know, music makes me happy. Um, uh, I never fight with my music. I never argue with my music. Uh, it's a happy sp- uh, you know happy spot to be in. Yeah. So if 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 you want to do it, put your give it a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, and and take it a day as it comes. You know, a day at a time, a day at a time. That's dope. Yeah, don't That's stop. Right, I'm gonna be by your house soon. 
to just have a look at your yeah you owe me a visit by the way right? yes yes yeah you're right yeah connection. so I'm, I'm putting a date now to it <laughs> i'll be down in job end of this month okay um, um you're my first stop all right yeah no, i'll be waiting thank you very much for joining me on the thank show. you so much man and literally i'll bring fun. all of this with me so as we can sit down and talk about your collection oh, of course yeah of course you know my collection is very it's very broad yeah uh, i collect a lot yeah. you know no there's, there's, there's uh, but it's not enough uh, so full stuff i look, look at enough. i look at my collection i'm like there's a lot missing yeah you know uh but obviously it goes with with uh, the budget man yeah and you know with <laughs> the uh, shipping actually. some some of us that are in yeah you know when you when you share a life with a partner you don't just entirely make your own decisions yeah true you always have to consult yeah so yeah. i don't want to be in a position where one day they'll bring me a rice and a vinyl and say <laughs> here's your food you, go. <laughs> <laughs> you know because there's yeah. no meat because you've been buying vinyls all along you yeah, know so yeah. so you have to uh prioritize here and there Before but yeah. let you go have you guys ever considered opening up reopening up or have you had talks about reopening up a south african plant that presses because i think that's one of the things that's making them very expensive mm. uh, look we haven't in all honesty um we haven't spoken about it uh I think the the, the uh, that conversation is is, is 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 quite a huge one yeah you know there has to be a lot of investment coming into play so we really haven't spoken about it I mean for me is one of my one of the things I want to do why is Christos phoning me now what does he want <laughs> <laughs> anyway I'll call him back all right so so um, we haven't really spoken about opening that but for one thing that I would want for myself is I want to open a, a record bar yeah you know, uh, have a few drinks here and there um, have my collection in that in that in that space yeah where people can just play and you know as they sit so nothing really of a of a hardcore uh, vibe, vibe just or a just just the chill yeah. coffee whatever a few beers wines but have you know Directly. my collection there where people can just go through and then play and then put it back yeah but it, 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 that that requires a lot of trust a lot of like you need to you know um plan around it properly yeah which yeah. which which is quite hard to do in in our country right now you know yes. you you'll have to you know uh, have a have a solid foundation in, in how you do it yeah yeah for the sake of the culture for the sake of collectors like me yeah. for the sake of the future generation when you sit on those very nice tables please throw that uh, concept on the table to say pressing plant yeah and and the closest one was in zim zim right yeah, yeah. that closed right closed yeah because i know i know nini nini malux yeah he does i think he's come from france or something like yeah. that yeah so and you know he actually showed me the how much it costs yeah. for him to have that done it's not cheap it's not you know it's so not. yeah i think you you might have planted something in me so maybe it be, i'll do a little bit of research in terms of how do we you know bring the pressing closer yeah yeah uh thank you very much for Tabo for sitting with me thanks man i appreciate it amen uh, my viking say is uh, live long thank you live long you must do the same definitely thank you very thank much. you so much it is and gentlemen dj ndosi for analog culture hashtag pa Woo-hoo.